hello my dear students uh, i am your physics faculty right welcome back to my class okay so we have been discussing about physical world right we have been discussing about the different kinds of force right so today is the continuation okay let's start the class okay so already we have discussed like what is physics what are different types of physics right physics is something that deals with the uh, nature around us right we try to understand the secrets of nature the laws of nature how they work the process of nature and we try to modify try to predict or try to control the nature right so this is about the physics okay as i told you physics is the most basic discipline from physics we have developed every other disciplines like chemistry maths you know biology all the branches or all the disciplines okay so already i have told you we have two main domain of interest in physics right one is macro macroscopic another one is micro microscopic domain so macro deals with the uh, terrestrial body means the bodies on earth as well as the celestial bodies the body on the means you can say the heavenly bodies astronomical uh, body right it's a it may be moon galaxy stars right uh, so many things okay so i told you right what are the subjects included in the macro physics right macroscopic domain so these are like thermodynamics right what is thermodynamics in thermodynamics we always study the uh, internal energy right how the changes and heat transfer all these kinds of things comes under the subjects like thermodynamics and i have already told you what is optics what is mechanics what is electrodynamics all these kinds of things and when you go for higher studies you'll get to know the different kinds and different you know the different uh, subjects different interest of physics and as well as we have discussed what is macroscopic domain which includes the study like subatomic particles what's inside the atom what is the behavior of atom so mainly the quantum physics right properly deal with the uh, microscopic domain of, or microscopic domain of physics okay for to deal with the microscopic domain of physics we specially use what quantum physics okay this is about the introduction i have told you unification reduction so many things right so now let's uh, discuss force now okay i already told you force is what push or pull right so different types already we have almost discussed what is gravitational force okay so let me write the expression so already according to previous class we have done till f equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square right where g is called universal gravitational constant so this expression will be important for you and let's find the expression for small uh, this g which is called universal gravitational constant so let me do cross multiplication so f r square z m1 m2 right so from here i can find the value of capital z this is f r square m1 divided by m2 okay so here so what is the value of this this is known as universal gravitational constant and what is the value of capital z the value of capital z is 6.6 uh, just okay just rough figure 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 11 so newton meter square per kg square okay this is the value of universal gravitational constant i hope it's clear now okay so as i told you gravitational force is the weakest force in nature means i have already told you there are four fundamental forces in nature right so how, among these four fundamental forces in nature the gravitational force is the weakest force so what is gra gravitational force it is the force by virtue of mass mass right it, each and every object in this universe attract with each other it is a mutually attraction with any other object with each other is it clear so what is the uh, main use of this gravitational uh, this gravitational force it is mainly plays in very important role in evaluation especially in the galaxy in large part bodies right galaxies stars in this particular no astron uh, means like in this particular uh, sizes bigger sizes the gravitational force is very effective okay so from the uh, expression it always inverse square law it always what inverse square law okay it is a field force gravitational force is what it is a field force and we can say gravitational force is what conservative in nature it is a conservative force what do you mean by conservative force so conservative force is something which do uh, which is independent of part it only depends upon the <coughs> final and initial position okay <coughs> i hope it's clear okay so next so this is about the gravitational force and let's discuss the different types of the force another type this is electromagnetic force 
Okay. So next uh, number two is say electromagnetic force. So as the name suggests, electro and magnetic, it deals with the charged particles. It deals with what? Charged particle. But this is combination of two forces, right? One is electric, another one is magnetic. So when we get the electric and when we get the magnetic field, when the charge addressed, when the charge body addressed, they will produce what? Electric field means electric force. Okay. So as it's already given by Coulomb, right? You already got the expression, right? So we got the expression F equal to suppose 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 divided by Q2, Q1, Q2 into R square. So this is the Coulomb force you already got in your class 10, F equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 by R square. So what is epsilon naught? Epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space. This is it, okay? Is it clear? So, okay, so electric field is the uh, electric field or electric force is the charge generated by the uh, charge particle addressed, okay? It is the force generated by the charge particle addressed. And what is magnetic field then? When the charge start moving, when the charge body start moving, they produce magnetic field. Is it clear? And that magnetic field will ex, uh, apply or means uh, act, uh, acting as a force in the moving charges. Is it clear? So this is combination of electric as well as magnetic fields. But the nature, since it is dealing with the charged particles, right? So it may be repulsive as well as the attractive in nature. So when the charges are like, we'll get the repulsive force. When the charges are unlike, say positive, negative, negative, positive, we'll get what? Attractive force. Okay. So as you can see from the expression, this is also of a inverse square law. Okay. And here the nature is repulsive as well as what? Attractive. And it, the range of this electromagnetic force is, it is a long range force. It is what kind of force? It is a long range force. Its uh, range is up to infinity. Range is what? Up to infinity. And as well as the gravitational force, right? Gravitational force, its range is infinity, long range force. Is it clear? And here, it is a field force. And it is also conservative in nature. It is also what? Conservative in nature. But uh, in comparison to gravitational force, the electromagnetic force is very, very large. It's almost 10 to the power 36 times. 10 to the power 36 times larger than the gravitational force. Is it clear? Okay. So next come to the different third category of force. Say this is nuclear or oh, sorry, strong nuclear force. Okay. Next, say let's discuss. What is strong nuclear, nuclear, strong nuclear force, okay, strong nuclear force, okay. So strong nuclear force, as the name suggests, this is nuclear, right? So especially this force, we can, see, we can see this force in the nucleus, inside the atom, in the nucleus. It binds the electrons and protons together, okay. It seems like when there is no strong nuclear force, nuclear seem to be <coughs> unstable, okay? Nuclear will become unstable, okay? Nucleus will what? Nucleus will become unstable. So this strong nuclear force binds the electrons and protons uh, together, right? Electrons, protons together. Sorry, uh, protons and neutrons together, not electron, okay? Electron do not experience this strong nuclear force, only the protons and neutrons, okay? So what we have to remember, the most important point is, strong nuclear force is charge independent. It's what? Charge independent. It acts equally on neutron as well as proton. As a neutron, neutron, it acts on the neutron, neutron, or neutron, proton, or proton, proton. Is it clear? So this is charge independent. And as I'm repeating, okay, it, electrons do not experience this strong nuclear force. It is a short range force. It is what? Short range force. Its range is only say 10 to the power minus 15 meter, okay? Its range is how much? 10 to the power minus 15. It acts only inside what? Nucleus. It binds electrons and protons together. So if there is, uh, if there is no strong nuclear force, the nucleus becomes unstable. Is it clear? Okay. So in comparison to electromagnetic force, right? In comparison to electromagnetic force, it is how much? 100 times larger than the electromagnetic force. How many times? 100 times. It is 100 times larger than the electromagnetic force. So if I compare this strong nuclear force with the uh, gravitational field, 
So it will be 3 into uh, 10 into 3 to the power 8 larger than the gravitational force. Okay. So it is a short range force. It acts inside the nucleus, right? Is it clear? Okay. So its or its range is how much? 10 to the power minus 15 meter. So I hope the three kinds of forces. I think it's clear now. Okay, we have the last type of force, right? Means the fundamental force that is weak nuclear force. Okay, so I'm writing here. So number four, we have weak nuclear force. Okay. So specially weak nuclear force we can see this kind of force in some reactions, especially suppose the beta de decay. What? Beta decay. Okay. So, especially in some special kinds of uh, reaction. Okay. So, you will get to know what is beta decay in class 12. Okay. This is a kind of reaction. Okay. So, here, so this is again a what? Weak force, but it's not that weak as uh, gravitational for a gravitational force. Okay. So it is again a short range force. What kind of force? It is short range force. So its range is 10 to the power minus 16. Oh, sorry. <laughs> its range is how much? 10 to the power minus 16 meter. Okay. Is it clear? So this is about the fundamental forces in nature. You'll get more details in the book, but almost I have uh, uh, mentioned each and every points. Okay. So if you want to go more details, Okay, you can go through the book or I think that information also sufficient. Okay, so we have discussed now gravitational force, electromagnetic force, sorry, strong nuclear force and what? Weak nuclear force. Okay, so if we compare the relative strength of these four forces, okay, if we compare the relative strength of the force forces, so this is how we can, okay, now let me write. So this is F, suppose this is Z means gravitational force and F I'm just writing W means weak nuclear force. Okay. These two suppose uh, say this is uh, we can say electro I'm writing E. Okay. Electromagnetic force is to say I'm writing here the strong. Okay. Strong means say this is strong nuclear force. So the order is like this 1 is to 10 to the power 25 is to 10 to the power 36 is to 10 to the power 38 okay this is the relative strength between among the four forces okay so this is about the four fundamental forces in nature so as the uh, physics believes in uh, what unification so we can uh, express each and every force in this universe with these four forces okay physics believe in explaining some any kind of system with the few parameters so with the help of four parameters means with the help of four parameters means with the help of these four kind of forces we can express any kind of forces in nature okay so next is derived force so what is derived force any forces other than these four forces are known as derived force it may be frictional force right it may be muscular force when you are doing some work mechanical work this is your muscular force so many forces are there electrical force so there are di different kinds of forces okay right oh. Okay, so this is about the force. Okay, so the last topic. So dear students, you'll get some laws. Okay, we'll get some laws. These laws you'll get in your different chapters like law of conservation of mass, law of conservation of momentum, as well as law of conservation of angular momentum. But here, if you discuss in the respective chapters, this will be more clear to you. But let me just tell you the short definition. What is law of conservation of mass? As you already know, right? Mass can neither be created nor destroyed, right? As you already got in your class 10, chapter 1, right? Law of conservation of mass, that way we balance the chemical equation. What is the main reason for balance the chemical equation? Because mass can neither be created nor destroyed. The total amount of mass in the reactant side must be equal to the total amount of mass in the product side. But this law is not that valid in today's world. Because there, since when we see the mass energy equivalence given by uh, Einstein, E equal to delta M c square where delta m is mass defect delta m is what mass defect if we try to apply this law of conservation of mass in this particular expression okay it's not valid for it because there is a something concept called mass defect what is mass defect you'll get to know in class 12 actually when two nucleus two nucleus combine with each other okay there will be loss of mass in form of energy in form of what energy we call this binding energy and that mass defect okay so law of conservation of mass okay this is not that valid okay but law of conservation of energy 
So what is law of conservation of energy? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can convert from one form of energy into another form of energy, right? Suppose as you already already got, got it, right? In case of electric uh, current, what happens? Sometimes it becomes too hot, right? Sometimes any devices becomes too hot. Temperature rises. Why? Because the electric energy is losing in form of heat. Okay. When you rub your hand like this, you are using mechanical force, right? You are rubbing like this. So you will feel hot after rubbing after some time. It means what? Your mechanical work is converted into heat, right? Your mechanical energy is converting into heat energy. So there are so many kinds. So mass can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And law of conservation of momentum. So first you have to know what is momentum. The product of mass and velocity is called what? Momentum. What is momentum? The product of mass and velocity. So you'll get to know when we study the Newton's law of motion. What that, uh, especially what that law suggests. The law of conservation of momentum, actually law of conservation of momentum states that if there is no any external force, if there is no any external force, the total momentum uh, will be conserved. Total momentum will be what? Conserved. This is what momentum before collusion will be equal to momentum after collusion. Again, I am using the new word collusion, right? So that's why you'll get to know this in your respective chapters. It'll, uh, it will become more clear. When I say collusion, this is the mu mutual interaction between the two bodies. What is collusion? This is mutual interaction between the two bodies, right? So dear students, it's, uh, let's learn in coming chapters all this. Okay, but just you have to know the laws of, uh, means the energy is law of energy, law of conservation of energy, law of this conservation of momentum, as well as you'll get law of conservation of angular momentum. Again, when I say angular momentum, okay, this is related to torque. And again, what is torque? Torque is what? Turning effect of force. But now what is turning effect of force, right? So there are so many lots of things, okay? So we'll get to know in, again, in the different chapter, okay? So this is about the chapter one, physics dear students okay you, chapter one physics is mainly dealt with on the theory right on the theory basis what is the history what is the history what is the excitement of physics what we are going to learn in physics and all these kinds of things right so this is almost a theoretical chapter so you can expect some mcqs from this particular chapter or generally it's not included in the exam syllabus but sometimes short question might ask okay so as i already told you you can't miss a single mark okay it matters one mark point a half mark everything is matters everything matters right so you please go through the chapter you try to no you, you will get the backside question papers uh, question so you try to solve all these questions right okay so okay so we'll discuss chapter two of the physics in my next class okay thank you